to welcome up to the stage Angelina Jolie and Elle Fanning. Thank you very much for being here, both of you. Um, just very, very quick introductions before we get going. Um, Angelina Jolie plays Maleficent in the film, Maleficent, uh, star of films including Wanted, Changeling, and Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and many more. Won the Best Supporting Oscar in 2000 for Girl Interrupted. Elle Fanning, uh, playing Aurora in Maleficent, uh, appeared recently in films including Somewhere, Ginger and Rosa, and We Bought a Zoo, having started acting for film and TV from a very young age. Thanks, both of you, for being here. Um, one question for me to start with, um, first to Angelina. So here we, with Maleficent, we have a, you know, a new look at the Sleeping Beauty fable, which has gone through many, many versions, including obviously the 1959 Disney film. But this one puts the, the idea of the traditional villain centre stage, and by doing so, upends the whole idea of the, of the villain. Was that particularly attractive for you and all your collaborators, to take this story, which everybody knows, but to come, at, come at it at a very, very, very different perspective? Yes, I think um, I remember hearing that they were going to make a film about Maleficent, and we thought, God, how could you possibly make a film where this, the center character curses a baby and in any way make that appealing? <laughs> um, and, uh, and Linda Wolverton um, really wanted to, uh, to back up the story and understand how she became evil, and I think that's a, a really interesting uh, thing to do and, and to question a, about human nature and... And, um, and there's, there's, a lot, uh, there's a lot in this film that we hope answers for people that, uh, that love the original and love the christening and love the fun of her and, and the, the, the wickedness and, and love Aurora and, and, and all her loveliness. But, uh, but then also we wanted, to, we wanted to make it more for, for modern audiences where it, uh, it goes deeper and they're more complex characters and their relationships more complicated. And, and, uh, and so we, we hope it's not just a, a kind of a new spin, but it's also like really updated it to, to make it more meaningful and, and give it more residence to today. And Elle, on the back of that question there, the, the, this idea of the update, what do you think, obviously we see Maleficent from a very different perspective in this version of, of the Sleeping Beauty story. What, what, what's different do you feel about Aurora? What, what, what's new that's being explored here? What, what does this film allow us to see of her? Yeah, well, I think in the original animated version, Sleeping Beauty, in that one, Aurora, she's very, you know, she's definitely kind of a delicate princess and loves all things and, um, yeah, everything that you think a princess is and kind of all those characteristics she, she definitely has. But in ours, she still is that way and she loves everyone and um, is very open and, and she's not afraid of Maleficent when she meets her, which that kind of terrifies Maleficent. Maleficent, she's like, everyone's normally so scared of me, but Aurora, you know, she hasn't learned that you're not, you're not, she hasn't learned to be scared of things that um, look odd or, you know, creatures that have horns. <laughs> and, um, and it's nice for Aurora in this one, she has more depth and obviously there are a lot of secrets um, there that, are, that are kept from her. Um, you know, she thinks both of her parents are dead and she lives kind of very isolated in this cottage with her three fairy aunties. And um, so she doesn't really know much about, you know, outside of the forest. And, it, and it's nice that I could bring, you know, more layers to her and, um, and, and, and have more strength than just kind of the pretty, pretty princess, you know, that's in, in the original Sleeping Beauty. And a final one for me, Angelina. Despite the, the new perspective on the villain, presumably it's still incredibly fun to play a compellingly wicked character like this. It was so much fun. Yeah, she's, uh, it, it was hard at first. I was actually quite, uh, quite afraid to do it because I thought, God, it was, the first one was done so perfectly. Uh, you know, I thought she was so cool when I was young. She was so elegant and, and um, powerful and, and uh, such a great voice. And I, and I don't, I, I, as, an, as an actress, I, I do... Uh, film. I don't do theater, so I don't naturally have that voice, and I, I'm not used to that kind of performing. And uh, and she not only had to have this kind of big voice, but you also have to just. There's no halfway when you have horns and <laughs> big. You know, she the, everything about her. Uh, I think uh, I had to to embrace my uh, my bizarre and my silliness and and. Um, and with uh, yes, it's a it's a I think it is a beautiful story, and it has a lot of. Uh, uh, depth to it, but 
we got a little crazy and we had a lot of fun and, and, I, and I hope that that uh, resonates and I hope that people really are entertained by it. We really did this. I certainly, for this performance, I wanted to entertain and uh, I hope we did. Thank you. Uh, if we can start the question, please. I'm going to start right down there and then, is there a microphone going around? Uh, yes, there. Um, well, if the microphone's there, if we can start with the gentleman there with a the pen in the air, then we'll come down here and then we'll go over to the side there. childhood with fairy tales, which ones did you like especially, which ones did you hate, which figures did you love and hate, did you play at school a part in a fairy tale and which one, and now as a mother of six, how do you handle, did you handle and do you handle that all with fairy tales? <laughs> I'm going to get this, I promise. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I wasn't as into fairy tales when I was, when I was little, and I think uh, it could also be, you know, I was, uh, I was of the generation of the, of the earlier Disney films where at that time the princesses, you know, the, all the, many of the girl, the female characters, uh, um, with the exception of the Maleficents, um, you know, were, were, not, uh, were not little girls that I admired, the, the princesses uh, uh, were, were not uh, characters I looked up to or identified with. Um, I think that's very different now for my girls and, and the more recent films. Um, my kids, I read them, uh, there's this, uh, Tashi is this story that they love and he comes in a series of this, um, um, well, it's, it's too much to explain, but anyway, it's Tashi <laughs> and it's great. But I, um, but I usually make up stories for my kids. I don't, uh, I, I, I like to tell them stories every night and I just make up any kind of crazy thing and like to involve them as characters. And, and, and like fairy tales, you try to, you try to not, um, the, the side of the fairy tale I don't like is this idea that there are these happy endings or that there's just good and evil and things are perfect. I, I like to, uh, I think there's, when there's a good story for children, it has a good sense of a moral tale. And, and I think um, uh, that's, that's what I try to teach my kids and, and uh, what we try to do with this film. Thank you. Uh, there's a question there, and if we can get the microphone to the gen gentleman there. Keep your hand up in the air, please. Thanks. Hi, I'm Gerd from Belgium. The okay. question's for Angelina as well. Um, as a child, did, did you uh, fantasize about the background of Maleficent already? Because I know she's one of your favorite villains uh, from, from the beginning, from all Disney movies. She was. I was always curious about her. Um, and I... And I can't tell you how much fun it was. It was like being a kid again when I got the script. And it was like unwrapping a mystery of where Diaval came from and, the, the, um, and who she really was. And uh, um, much more than I expected. Linda Wolverton did, did something really special with this, much more than I expected. But yes, I think, I think all kids are curious. They are drawn, they're drawn to, uh, not the bad guy, but they're drawn to things that are dark. And I think it's not just a, it's it's not a, just a simply a desire to you know be wicked. I think we uh, I think there are things that frighten us in life, and and we want to and especially children they want to understand so they can they can take it on or they want to uh, understand so so it frightens them less. Mm -hmm. Just take a question down here, please. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Hello, this is a, a question for Angelina. Um, do you think um, this is the first of many roles for Vivian? your daughter, and um, also, um, do any of your other children show any signs of becoming actors? Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the only reason, we, we never have intended, and, and we still don't, to put our children in film and, and, and encourage them to be actors. I encourage them to be happy in whatever they, they wish to be. But um, the, the reason that we ended up uh, needing to put Vivian in the film is because there, it was a character when it's when Aurora is five and she has to, as she said, not see me as a demon. And, um, and all little kids that came to visit set, crew members would bring their children and they would see me and they would be terrified. They would cry or they would freeze. And, uh, and they, they could, certainly couldn't do a scene with me. So I didn't, uh, it, it actually, was genuinely out of necessity that it had to be Vivian, so we could have a have a good scene. Um, but uh, I don't I don't I don't know. It was a. It's not. It's 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 still funny to us. You know, like anybody, it's our little girl. So we see her, and she's, 
you know, she's, she's just silly and sweet, and the idea that she's in a movie is, 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 uh, is still kind of funny to her mom and dad. Thank you. Uh, question there, please. Oh, sorry, it's the person behind. Thanks. So a question to Angelina and also to Elle, if I may. Um, Angelina, when you're playing a character like this, can you shake her off, or did you go home and scare the family? And Elle, what was it like uh, acting opposite such a terrifying character? Or is she like that in real life? <laughs> let's, let's, start, let's start with Elle. No, she's definitely not Thank you. terrifying in real life. Um, <laughs> but I do think that no one else could, um, could have played Maleficent. I mean, I, there's also... You know, for me at least, before I had met Angelina, I mean, you hear the name, you know, Angelina Jolie, you know, it's like, it's that name. And then I, I remember meeting her for the first time and we were at Pinewood Studios and it was kind of that day. I didn't, we were doing rehearsals and I didn't know that I was going to specifically meet her then. I didn't know if she was here yet, but then kind of went around like, oh, she's here, she's here type thing. And then um, I turned the corner and there she was. Um, and she was, you know, no horns or anything. She was just normal clothes. And um, But right away, she kind of became flesh, you know. She was like, the name kind of went away and it's just like Angelina, you know, and people on set are like Angie and, you know. <laughs> so, um, and right away she gave me a giant hug and, um, she said, oh, we're going to have so much fun working together. And she shook my shoulders, and I remember that. Um, and, yeah, so it was amazing. Not, not terrifying. But when I did see her in the costume for the first time, I wasn't scared. I was just I was more excited. But, you know, she had those contact lenses in, and she definitely didn't look like herself. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> um... I have to ask my, my family. I, I thought I did. I thought I came home lovely. <laughs> um, the, you know, the, the interesting thing about it is as much as she's, she's, a, she's a villain and she's dark and she's uh, considered mean, um, it, she was re I was very playful as her. So it, 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 is, it is a film where it's not me playing a, you know, at such a heavy role that I come home and, and my children have to feel the weight of a performance and this kind of darkness. I, I came home very uh, silly and and uh, making you know they they my children love Maleficent's voice so they always make me do it at home and walk around and uh, so so I think uh, I think it actually brought out a, a real the child in me to be a part of this kind of film so I I think I, I was fun. Thank you. The question there on the end of the road from Budapest, much. Hungary. Uh, after be on Angelina, uh, after becoming uh, the world famous uh, villain experiencing her complexity. Uh, please tell me, for you as a person, is there anything in her behavior, in her character, that you might envy or uh, maybe admire her for? Um, envy or admire? Well, there is, there is, you haven't seen the film, but there is a lot more to her. She, she is actually somebody I, I did in the end like. Um, I think I would I envy you know what's interesting is I think for all of us in this room you know for everybody watching or we, we all there's there's um there's a side of us that would like to be completely free and uh, use our voice to the fullest and have as big a laugh as possible and just really in, indulge in this kind of uh, and there's very little opportunities in life where you've you do this, where you explore this side of yourself and you, and you can kind of test the, the, your power and your voice and your strength and your, um, and she was that character for me. I, I didn't know my voice could be that strong or I didn't know I could have that much fun and, and um, so she certainly has a, a, a freedom that, uh, that in daily life certainly I, you know, I don't have, most people don't have. And Elle, just to put, put that part of that question to you as well, was there, was there anything about this role that you felt you hadn't, you hadn't got to explore before that was particularly new that made, made it exciting for you? Wow, well, Sleeping Beauty, she, I mean, she definitely has this love of life that's unlike, you know, it's, it's extreme. So, because it is a fairy tale, so everything is definitely, you know, exaggerated. And, you know, you do see that it's obvious that there's a light and a dark and that... Aurora is definitely kind of the light and the smile of it. And um, I do envy, you know, her ability to kind of love everything and, and be so curious about things and, and be okay with asking 
questions, because I think <laughs> with me, I, um, I wonder about a lot, but I don't think I ask enough questions about them. And um, with her, she's, uh, she's very open and, and kind of self-confident in a way where she'll just kind of go for it. And, and she definitely badgers Maleficent with some, <laughs> some questions, which I, uh, I think I would be intimidated to if I was in her place. <laughs> Thank you. Um, question a few rows back there on the end. Yep. This is Dominic from Jonathan of Minati. I'll end you know, one question. About the intention of the event last night, can you tell us something about it? Uh, what the event was last night? Yeah. Um, it was it was lovely. I'd I'd never been there, and um, it, it was very unusual for us. Usually, you have a premiere and you you show a film, and and uh, it's very it's very traditional. It was actually it was beautifully done. It was um, nice to be uh, um, focusing on the creation of, of a film. You know, the, the the costumes and the design, and the um, we met some some children from the hospital who were just lovely and fun and inspiring and, and it was lovely to have them there and um, so it was just no I'm a, a really really lovely evening I, I had a, a really nice time thank you thank you Let's take a question down in the front corner here please thank you hi um, in spite of uh, how scary Maleficent is this is still a Disney movie and it is something that you can uh, take all your children to go and see and I just wondered have your children in the past expressed uh, an interest in seeing the films that mom and dad have made and have you been had to be selective in what you will let them see and when you'll let them see it yes very um, the older ones recently saw Mr. and Mrs. Smith and I think they thought that was the funniest thing they'd ever seen because of course <laughs> watching your parents fight as spies is, is kind of some strange child fantasy. Um, uh, so, yes, they, they have started to. They're not, you know, they're not as excited about it, which is kind of great. They find it, sometimes it's fun. My littlest one, Knox, he's, it's, you know, he sees Tomb Raider and he thinks mommy can do all those things and it's, um, but uh, th this one is, I think I'm maybe the most excited about because this is really one we can all we can all see, and I think they're all really going to like. Thank you. Uh, there's a question down here. Then I'd like to get that microphone to, more to the back of the room because I'm missing people out there. So the gentleman in the check shirt, keep waving your hand around, please, and then we'll take the question here. Thanks. Hello. <laughs> Just, Hello. Is that one? Um, uh, Darren Scott from Gay Times. Uh, Disney villains are quite loved by the gay community. How do you feel now about being forever being an inspiration to drag queens? Uh, I, this role. And, I uh, would be thrilled if it's embraced by the drag queens. I, 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 I think we both, we, we all share a love of this kind of costume. I'm with them. But Al, do you feel you're missing out? No, no, no they can dress up as princesses too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? If you had to choose a song to lip sync for your life, what would it be? A song to lip sync? Lip sync to. God, I, I wouldn't know. What, but it would what, definitely what, it would probably be a Queen song. Okay. So it would be a Queen song. I just couldn't figure. I couldn't pick one at this moment. But it would definitely be Freddie Mercury. <laughs> it's one to think about. There's a question over there, please. Um, I can't follow that question, um, <laughs> Miss Jolly. Um, I wonder where acting now fits in with your priorities, given that um, you've got directing as well you're getting into and also your work for the UN uh, and prevent sexual violence? Um, it's it's uh, going to be taking more of a backseat. Um, I've had a wonderful career and I, I'm very happy to have all the opportunities I've had to tell stories and um, work for as long as I have. Um, I will do, I will not, I, I'm sure there'll be a few more films but I'm, I'm happy I'm able to be selective and have fun with characters like this and um, but I would like to focus more on writing and directing, and 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 above all, I would like to do more, uh, focus more on my on my work with the UN and with PSVI, and and if I can just say, I I, I do hope um, everybody in, in June June tenth to to the thirteenth is uh, is the conference on sexual violence, and and uh, it's an open event, and I hope everybody comes. Thank you. So, a question there in the yes, please. Hi, Josip Jucic from Croatian magazine Gloria. A uh, question to Ms. Jolie. Uh, we have so far seen only the visual side of the films, and it is great. So have you taken anything from the set home, maybe costume? And the question once more, uh, will we see you again in Sarajevo this for the 20th year of the festival this year? 
In Sarajevo? Yeah. I'm always, I'm always want to go, so I, I would love to, uh, I'm, I always try to go. I will try, yeah. I, I love it there. We, uh, and I love the festival. I think it's a really, it's one of the best festivals. Um, and did I take anything home? Um, I do have some horns at home. <laughs> I have to put that question to Anne as well. Did you, did you take anything home from the set? I don't. I don't have anything. But I think, I don't know, they're all on display right now, my costumes and things. Thank you. Um, question there, please. Yeah, hi, question for Angelina. Did you um, draw on anybody from real life when it came to playing this role? Were you thinking about anybody that we know from public life when you, were, when you came to portray this character? I didn't, I, I really did study the, the, uh, the classic animated because I thought that actress, it's such a, such a wonderful, her voice was so extraordinary and, and I thought the original design was amazing. So, um, but uh, but I, I also listened to a lot of tapes of theater actresses. British theatre actresses, um, and tried to just learn from them. And they're, they're, uh, you know, we as Americans are, are we, we don't have such a such a gift with, I think, with the way, um, with language, and and um, and so I tried to, uh, I tried to study that. But no one per person in particular. No, no one particular yeah. actress now. I'll put that to you as well. What was your, what was your route to finding your your British accent in this film? Um, well, I had an amazing. Um, had a dialect coach that was with me. And um, yeah, we, we tried to figure it out. I, I did a film where I had to have a 60s, it was in the 60s East London accent. So it was very different from this one. And I was like, oh, this one's, we tried to find the right, you know, princess voice. You know, it can't be too soft and gushy. So, you know, she has to have some, some oomph. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this question there, man in the blue jumper. I'm not sure if the microphone's close to you. We'll get it there. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm on from This Is Fake DIY. My question is for both Angelina and Elle. Uh, Maleficent is a very well-known character, but with this film, it sort of fills in the blanks on that character, which I, which I think is very interesting. Looking at some of the other characters you've played, if you could have a film to fill in those blanks, which character would it be and why? It's a great question. Yeah. Just take some... <laughs> <laughs> I'm suddenly trying to remember things I've done. <laughs> Maybe you can help us. We can keep is anybody, is, anybody th is, there, is there a character either one of us have played that you feel is not complete or would be... Does anybody have a thought? Mr. Smith. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, yes. Salt. Salt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Yes, I'll say, I'll take them all. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Yes, I feel like I, I lived out the, the rest of that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's going well. Hello. Um, you mentioned earlier the um, sort of princesses of Disney in days gone by. I just wondered from both of you, were you conscious of um, having a sort of female role model for a new generation of children? And how did you approach your characters with that in mind? I think so. I mean, it's probably, you've, you've probably done the most to, to change... To change, to change the princess. Because there's really no backstory on her, you know. Um, I mean, there is, but she, they need to have, you know, she needs to have more added layers and make her just have a little bit more substance because, you know, she just frolics around a lot of the other film and sleeps. So, um, and in this one, um, she, I definitely sleep, but um, there, I definitely have more scenes. Um, and, and Linda wrote those scenes um, where I actually, you know, get to do more. And also, it's, um, I, I kind of discovered this, me and Linda were talking, that when I meet the prince, it's the first time that um, Aurora has ever seen a boy in her entire life. So she looks at him like, kind of like, what is this thing? And um, so, you know, she definitely gave me kind of added little notes that I could use. Because um, I don't think that that part of the story, you know, she in the an animated movie, Aurora obviously meets the prince in that one. It's kind of love at first sight, but you don't get, you know, that little note of um, that it's the first time she's ever seen a guy in her life. So um, just the, the little things all, you know, come together to, to make her, you know, a little extra. <laughs> Thank you. We've got time for one final question. We're going to take one just down there on the second row. Is the microphone anywhere near there, please? If we could just move it along down to the front. Thank you very much. Excellent. 
Hi. Um, this is obviously a reimagining of one of Disney's classics. There's so many great Disney movies out there. If you could reimagine anyone, any character, what would it be? If we could reimagine it. Yeah. Any other Disney movie that you could take on and really explore a character in it like you've done in this movie, what would it be? Dumbo. <laughs> Dumbo. I love Dumbo. Yeah, I love Dumbo. I do think Dumbo is one of the really is one of the best. Yeah. Do you have Do you have any idea of what needs exploring? I love exploring? the crows too. Yeah. I know. Well, we could you know we could do it live with a baby elephant. That'd be so cute. <laughs> See, she is Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> I think so that's probably, cute. So that's probably cute. a great note on which to end. On which, I'm sure there's a producer running out the back of the back of the room. Okay, now, ready, ready to get that one moving. But Angelina, did you I have would a love to know. No, no. I, I mean, I'll, I'd say Dumbo. Dumbo's interesting. I was always fascinated with the mother who was locked up for being mad. Maybe that's a very dark version of Dumbo, but we could go with that one. Well, I'm looking forward to that. But before that, Maleficent <laughs> is coming to Cinemas here on May the 28th. Thank you, Angelina Jolie, Elle Thank Fanning. You. Thanks for joining us this Thank morning. You Thank you. Much.